Our theme for today, the problem solver. And so, Father, we are desperate for your spirit to just take control and do what no one else can do. Let that anointing that makes speaking easy, graceful come upon me. Let the anointing that brings revelation of what is heard come upon the listeners. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Praise God. There's a scripture that I feel is one of the most significant, if you can grade scripture in that way, um, in the Bible. It's taken from 2 Peter, 2 Peter, first chapter, verses 2 to 4. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you, the New King James Version, in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. By his divine power, God has given us everything for a godly life. We receive all these things for godly life simply by coming to know him, Jesus Christ. And as a result of coming to know him, he gives us some great and precious promises. These great and precious promises that he has given you and I as believers allow us to share in his divine nature partakers of his divine nature. And so the scripture tells me that every single one of us, the moment we come to Christ, access is created for us to partake of the divine nature of God, to have a part of God, expressions of God, deposited in you and I. And so if we believe the scripture and we do, then when people encounter you or, or encounter me, they really should encounter God, at least the dimension of him, because we are partakers of that divine nature. It's really scriptures that confirm original scriptures that have to do with the creation of man. Let us make man in our image and our likeness was the word that the Trinity spoke to themselves as they conceptualize the creation of man. And this scripture in, in 2 Peter just confirms that indeed we were made in his image and his likeness. In fact, it's a bit more than an image. A part of him was put in us. And we could go in many different directions about that, that expression of the divine nature. But for the purposes of today... If a part of God was in us, then it must surely be, amongst the many other things, a part that was designed to solve problems. Because you see, the first introduction of God to the world was as a problem solver. You see, the Bible tells us that in the beginning was the heavens and the earth, the first, it, first scripture. But then the Bible goes on to present a problem with what existed in the beginning. The earth was without form. It was void. It was dark. It was chaotic, one translation says. It was a wasteland, another says. And God's intention was very simple. He wants to create man. That was his original intention. That's why he created the heavens and the earth in the first place. But then he created the heavens and the earth, but it... it it wasn't where he wanted it to be. There were problems that needed to be solved. It needed to, be, to get to a certain place where it would be... Praise God. It would be ready for his creation. And so for the next six days, 
God went into problem-solving mode. He separated waters from waters to solve a problem. He knew that his creation, man, wouldn't have any food to eat. So he created plants and herbs and trees. He created fish, created animals. He knew that his creation, man, needed lights to function. He created lights, great lights and smaller lights. And at the end of solving all his problems, he didn't need anybody to commend it to him. He looked at it and commended himself. He said, this is good. And so if we're like him, then if we have a part of that divine nature, then we have to be problem solvers. We have to be the solution to some of the things that exist in our own lives and in the lives around us. If we are not the solution, then we really are not in his image and his likeness. We are not functioning like we should. Can someone say amen? amen. So what are these expressions then? that make us like him, solve problems. There are a group of Hebrew boys who were serious problem solvers in their generation, much in the same way as David was for his. And as I run through these seven or eight things, I'll reference them reference David and reference Joseph. But predominantly, I will reference these, these four boys. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. Daniel, the sixth chapter, verses 1 to 5. Will you move very fast with me, very quickly? It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these Three, three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault against him because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning his God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. Let, let, let's, let, us, let us stop there um, just because of time. These three Hebrew boys plus Daniel were young boys getting on with life in the city where they lived. One day, the city was besieged, invaded. These boys are actually victims of war. I can only imagine the trauma they went through as an invading force besieged their city. I dare say that they must have lost loved ones. They must have had the casualties that come with war. Now, that wasn't all that they had to deal with, the trauma of war. They were uprooted from all that they knew and they were taken into an alien land. They left the comfort of home, the comfort of friends, the safety of the environment that they had grown up in, and were taken into an alien land. In the alien land, their mind was subjected to abuse. They were given strange names. They tried to introduce them to strange gods, given a strange language. They had every reason not to succeed in life. In fact, the enemy would have been smiling in hell that these ones, we have destroyed their lives. But then the Bible gives us an amazing testimony that these same boys, they excelled. They, they exhibited such excellence that they rose to the top, so much so that right at the top of the kingdom were three governors who reported to the king, and Daniel was one of them. Right under him, 120 satraps. And these boys were part of that hierarchy of that civil service. So the question is, how did these boys get there? And that's what we want to just run through very quickly. 
Because I think someone should be getting ready for some sort of promotion. Because if we're talking about problem solvers, these boys exhibit all the traits of problem solvers. So what are these traits that we expect, you and I, that will make a difference, that will allow us to rise above any limit, limiting circumstances? And I'm telling you, whatever you might be going through or I, I might be going through as a challenge, it it pales into insignificance compared to what these boys went through. And yet, the, the story of these boys' lives is encoded in the Bible as a word of encouragement for us. Number one, and we move, we'll move very quickly, the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that when God presents himself as a problem solver, one of the things that is clearly told us is the role that the Spirit of God plays in dealing with problems. For immediately the problem is presented, this wasteland, this chaotic, formless void, we are told that the Spirit of God is brooding over everything. If there's one ally you need in life, it is the Spirit of God. That's the reason why Jesus went. That he might go and send us a helper. And the reason you acknowledge that, you, that he's a helper is because you need help. To try to navigate through life without the help of the Holy Spirit is to consign yourself to pain, to failure, to toiling. The reason our nation is challenged, despite the proliferation of churches, is because you have churches filled with people, but the people are not filled with the Spirit of God. Because a people filled with the Spirit of God will bring about dramatic change. The, 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 the whole power of God is carried by the Spirit. When Zerubbabel, the young man, was given the task of, rebuilding the, of building the temple, a task that would strike fear into the heart of any man, also because most of the people were looking to the original temple that was built by Solomon and trying to, trying to compare what happened then with what was happening now. The word to the young man is a word to someone here. In Zechariah, the fourth chapter and the sixth verse, the word of the Lord came to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You can't do it on your own. It is a recipe for disaster. Number two, because we don't have that much time. Knowledge. Knowledge of two things. Number one, knowledge of God. Why would a young boy run with a sling and a stone towards what all his natural senses should be telling him is certain death. Against the, Goli the Goliath, well-versed in war, your ultimate warrior, the young boy is either suicidal or the young boy knows something that other people don't know, that the God that he serves is going to bring this man down. The knowledge of God will position you to deal with life's problems. Daniel 11 verse 32 commends those boys. Those who do wickedly against the covenant he shall, com he shall corrupt with flattery. 
But the people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Knowledge is power. Knowledge of God is power. But then it's another dimension to knowledge once knowledge of God is established. And that is knowledge in life. The more problems that exist, the more people will turn to those who have the solutions to their problems. When they want to retrench people, no, no employer is, 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 is foolish. Everybody is naturally selfish without Christ and self-preservative. If they know that this person is critical to this business, they will not put you on the list of those to be retrenched for their own sake. Not because they love you, but simply because their priority is who can help this business. The season of jack of all trades and master of none is over. The more problems that proliferate in the world, the more we're looking for people who can bring solutions to those problems. And when you have knowledge in an area, you just have to set up shop. People will gravitate because of the knowledge that you have. Can someone say amen? amen. Daniel 1, 19 to 20. Then the king interviewed them. And among them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Nazariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those are their other names. Therefore they served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. The king, the, he didn't love them, but when he spoke to them, he thought, unbelievable. This young boy is no better than all these characters who are hanging around me. For my own sake, I better bring them close to me. Be a, be a problem solver in your workplace. Your CEO will be the one saying, we need to keep her. We need to keep him. Number three, character. You can't position yourself to be used by God without character. Frankly, let me put it this way. The extent to which God is going to use you directly corresponds with character. That's why before Jesus started his ministry, the Spirit of God led him into a test of his character. Matthew 4 from verse 4. And it was when he passed the test of his character that he was released into ministry. You see, God has to prevent accidents from happening. And accidents that will affect his name. And so some people want to go further. But God is saying to take you further is to expose you to a place where your character cannot stand the heat. So stay where you are. Some people, they want to be blessed financially. But God is watching them in what they have. And he cannot see any faithfulness whatsoever. And God is saying, my grace is sufficient for you where you are. You'll be okay. You'll manage. But to take you higher is to expose you to what you cannot handle. Because you don't have the character for it. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. Number four, prayer. If there was anything 
that commends David, commends Daniel to us. It's their prayer life. David's prayer life, we use for our own prayer life. It's called the book of Psalms. We see a man who understood how to wrestle with God in prayer. Whenever Daniel was faced with a situation, what was his response? His first response was prayer. Daniel 6 verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. He didn't wait until he was minister to now start to find some prayer contractors to help him pray. He didn't wait until there was some responsibility to start to learn how to pray. From his early days, he had developed a life of prayer. There isn't time for us to go into it, but if we, if we wrestle not against flesh and blood, don't think that we wrestle not. Because that we wrestle not against flesh and blood doesn't mean that we don't wrestle. There is an organized hierarchy of wickedness that Paul crafts in that scripture in Ephesians 6 from verse 12 that, that has been assigned to stop you from getting to where you should get to. If you don't know how to wrestle with them in the place of prayer, you really can't go too far. Number five, what makes you an effective problem solver? Diligence. Proverbs 22, verse 29. Have you seen a man diligent in his way, in his business? He will stand before kings and not before mean men. It's a fascinating scripture. Because it doesn't qualify his business. It says just diligent in his business. Diligent in any business, as long as it's not illegal. That diligence in that thing, the Bible says it will take you before kings. Just be good at it. Just consi be consistent in it. And you know, the thing with diligence is that nobody celebrates diligence. People celebrate the outcome of diligence. That's why people are not diligent, because there isn't so much encouragement to be diligent. That constant and steady application that is almost done, all, usually done in obscurity, there's, there's, there's no celebration of it. But the outcome of diligence is always celebrated. Anything you see that you admire that has longevity must have diligence behind it. If you see a good marriage, those are two diligent, diligent people. Good marriages don't just happen. They don't just fall from heaven. No, no, no. I have a good marriage, by God's grace, a very good marriage. But trust me, I work hard at it. And my wife works hard at it. Because to live with me, it, it can't be easy. So, 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 she works hard. Just to, just to live with me well. If you see children that are well brought up, we are born with sin. We, we have a seven-year-old. By two years old, I didn't teach him to tell lies. He just was started telling lies. I said, what do you get? get you, what, kind of, what kind of boy are you? Which family are you from? Why are you telling lies like this? He <laughs> just, just was born in sin. I said, you did it. He said, I didn't do it. I said, you did it. Okay, daddy, I did it. I said, so why did you tell the lie in the first place? So somebody has to take him and start to school him day after day. Brilliance just doesn't fall from heaven. No. Some mother sat down, some father sat down and poured an invested time. Nobody celebrated it until the child got a first class. And then everybody celebrated the diligence of someone who was behind it. 
The plans of the diligence, Proverbs 21, verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. You know, um, my wife, Shola, she's an outdoor person. So recently she, um, she climbed Kilimanjaro. She, th- she said to me she'll never do it again. Never. Because she said it was the most painful thing she's done. Climb to the summit. When she finished the climb, there was a whole press thing in London and she was being interviewed. So it became a boss. Everybody wanted to climb Kilimanjaro. I looked at some of the people who wanted to climb Kilimanjaro. I said, you will not climb because I will not do your burial. Because I know what it took her. I know the training she went through. I know how every morning she was on the road running to build stamina. I know how she would climb hills. We have a hill where she was training. When an oxygen mask to build her legs and to acclimatize. But nobody saw all that. I saw it but because I was the husband. But nobody saw that. All people remember are the pictures of her on the summit, the amount of money she raised, and then all the stuff that happened when she came down. Nobody celebrates diligence. People celebrate the outcome. But you ha- can't have an outcome if you're not diligent. Amen? Praise God. One more and then I'll, 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 I'll end. You can't solve problems if you don't serve with your spiritual gifts. 1 Peter 4 verse 10, the amplified version. Just as each one of you has received a spiritual gift, each one, everybody, a spiritual talent and ability graciously given by God, everybody has a spiritual gift. Employ it in serving one another as is appropriate for good stewards of God's multifaceted grace, faithfully using the diverse, varied gifts and abilities granted to Christians by God's unmerited favor. There is no one under the sound of my voice who doesn't have a gift from God. A particular spiritual talent, a gracious divine endowment. Every one of us has it. I'm not multi-talented. I've come at this stage in my life to accept those limitations. But I do one or two things well. One of the things I've always done well is that I talk. While growing up, all my report cards, he talks too much. (laughs) He talks too much. He never keeps quiet in class. The poor teachers didn't know it was a gift. If they had known it was a gift, I might have gone further in life because they might have nurtured it instead of condemning it. Because what do I do now? I talk for my life. I talk on Sundays. I talk on Tuesdays. I just talk. But now God says, bring that gift. God says, bring that gift, and then I will use it. That's why he said to Moses, what is in your hand? Moses, almost I can imagine with an irritation, said to God, it is a stick, a rod, God. We are talking about delivering a nation. You're asking me what is in my hand. It's a stick. Shepherds lean on it and they use it to beat sheep so sheep can go in the right direction. God, can we get back to the agenda delivering Israel? And then God says, throw it down. And I can imagine the irritation with which Moses, just out of obedience because he was Moses, throws the rod down as if, let's get over with this thing and talk about delivering a nation. And the rod becomes a snake. And Moses is amazed. I can imagine the smile on God's face. And God says, pick it up by the tail. Moses picks it up and it becomes a stick. What what was God saying to Moses? In your hand is just a stick. 
if you submit it to me, it becomes whatever I want it to become. So you think it's just a smile. That's what Joy Girl used to think. While others would say, I'm gifted in keyboards, I'm a mathematician, you know, I know I'm numerate, you know, I, I know IT. And they ask Joy Girl, and I know her personally, they ask her, what's your gift? She said, I don't know. They say, I just smile well. One day, someone saw her smile and thought, this smile can sell, sell a bar of soap. Guess what? Her billboards were all over Lagos with that smile saying, buy Joy Soap. That launched her. My sister, there's a gift you have in your hands. Don't disdain it. Allow God to use it to solve your problems, someone else's problems, and the problems of this nation. Can we give God a clap offering? Go on. Let's bless God. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. I've, I've, I've run out of time, but I want to share something um, which I feel very led to share in this church. Just two, three minutes and I'm done. This is the first time I'm going to share this at a church, apart from our church. Sometime in September, I embarked on a long fast. Somewhere in the 40-something day of the fast. And praying, like I've never prayed before. A couple of hours a day, my wife and I. We felt God was birthing something. And we didn't know what it was. And so I just started fasting. And I was going to fast until God told me what he was birthing. I knew it was, it was life-changing. And then I started teaching a message, a series called God Answers Prayers. Probably the most impactful series I've ever taught in my life. On the second day of the series, as I finished preaching, a prophetic unction came upon me. Now, I'm not a prophet. I'm a pastor, increasingly with an apostolic calling. That fivefold ministry, I'm not a teacher. I'm sure you've heard me teach. You're probably thinking, I know people who teach better than him. I'm not an evangelist. You know, maybe, maybe if I see crowds, I will do evangel. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a prophet. I'm a pastor. I shepherd people. I'm very comfortable in what I am. But now and again, when God wants to do something, any of those gifts, the Spirit comes upon you. So a prophetic unction came upon me. And I started to cry. I started to choke at the end of the service. I was choked up. Very emotional. And then I started to talk about Elijah and how Elijah heard a, a message from God that there's going to be rain. Please listen to me because this is going to change someone's life. He heard a message from God that there's going to be rain. And then he went up to wait for the rain. And he did what every right-thinking Christian should do. He got on his knees to pray for the rain. And he sent his servant the first time. He expected that because God has said, the servant is going to come back and say, yes, there's rain. The servant came back with bad news. There's someone under the sound of my voice. You already know what I'm talking about. You've been waiting for a while. And the servant has come back, not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, not five times. Even came back the sixth time. And you're wondering, but God, I heard you. I was in church when Pastor Godman preached that message. I knew it. It was me he was talking to. I heard you in my private time. I received that word. And that person is on the verge of giving up. Tired. But then Elijah said, go back and check. The servant went the seventh time. The servant came back in shock. He said, I actually saw a cloud, a man's fist rising. What am I saying to you as a church, Elevation Church, and to you as a person? That this church is in its seventh season. That's why I say you haven't seen anything yet. That the servant is coming back with some news that is going to stun you. That, that, that the thing that you have been believing God for, the things that God showed your pastor and his wife. This isn't what God showed them. 
This is just a start of the journey. But some of the things that God showed them, some of the things that God told you, I just came to tell you that this is your seventh season. That the news is coming. That what you've been believing God for is started to happen. It's on the horizon and it's coming to you. Can someone say amen? Give God a clap offering.